Hello, this is Britt Caswell with another example video. In this video, I'm covering example 4 from section 2-3 in the Savas Realize Algebra 2 textbook. So in this video, it's, it's covering or finding the zeros of a quadratic function, and it has to do with word problems. So in this problem, there's a multi-level driving range, right? So there's a, I didn't even realize there were multi-level driving ranges, but <laughs> apparently you can shoot golf balls from uh, various heights in a building. So Marco is on the second level, which is 32 feet high in the air. And he hits the golf ball and they went ahead and they created a model of that golf ball with this equation. So that 32 feet is right there on your C value, right? Because that's your y-intercept. And so they're wondering when the golf ball is going to hit the ground. So how long that takes. So the first thing that I notice with this equation is the 16, 16, and 32. All right? A, those are very big numbers, but also they are all divisible by 16. <laughs> so if I set this equation equal to 0, which is what I have to do to solve by factoring anyway. I can kind of simplify this equation a little bit when I go to factor it by dividing everything by negative 16. Why am I doing negative 16 instead of just 16? It's because I want this a value to not be negative and I want it to be as small as possible. So 0 divided by negative 16 is just 0. Negative 16x squared divided by negative 16 is just x squared. 16x divided by negative 16 is negative 1x. And 32 divided by negative 16 is negative 2. So just like that, this went from being kind of a monster to factor to being something kind of small. And that just came from factoring out my GCF. So now this has an A value of 1. So I could factor this just by using my double bubble method. All right, so I fill in my x's. I drop my first sign down. And to get a negative 2 here, I have to have opposite signs. So this one's going to be a positive. So then if I set up my table, I need the factors of 2 that when I subtract them, they have a difference of 1. Well, there's only two factors of 2. There's 1 and 2. And if I subtract them, it is 1. Now, to remember, your b value here is a negative, so your bigger number has to be negative. So I'm going to put the 2 where that minus is and then the 1 where the, the non-minus is. All right, and so now I'm going to solve because I need to find the zeros, All right? So if I have this golf ball traveling like this, this point, this zero, is where it's hitting the ground, and that's going to tell me the amount of time that it was in the air. So I'm going to take each of these factors, now that I've factored it, and set them equal to zero. So I have x minus 2 equals zero, and x plus 1 equals 0. So for this one, I'm going to add 2 to each side, and I get that x equals 2. And on this one, I'm subtracting 1 from each side, and I get x equals negative 1. So in, in terms of my little parabola, okay, if I continue this down this way, negative 1 is here, and 2 is here. And we have to think about kind of the, the realisticness of this problem. So that x-axis is talking about time, right? It's probably a number of seconds, okay? And the thing is, is, is it possible to have negative time? So when Marco hits this golf ball, is that golf ball going to go back in time? <laughs> Doesn't doesn't make sense, right? So here, this negative 1 answer 
it, it doesn't make sense within the context of our problem. And so I'm going to get rid of it as an answer because it doesn't work within within our restrictions of the problem. So the answer to this is it would take two seconds for the golf ball to hit the ground. And remember if you um, have a word problem you usually want to answer it with a word answer. That's why I'm writing that down. Let's try another ex example of parabolic motion. This one's with baseball. So, uh, for some reason, people in the upper deck of the stadium are throwing a baseball back down. Okay, now they're, they're 128 feet above the ground, so this is a really a nicely sized baseball stadium, I would say. Alright, so we have this function, uh, 0 equals negative 16 x squared plus 32x plus 128. And those are kind of ugly numbers. They really are. So what I'm doing is I'm checking for a GCF that'll make it prettier. Now I know 16 goes into 32, but I don't know if it goes into 128. So I'm using my calculator, and I see that 16 goes into 128 eight times. So just like on the last one, I can... I can simplify this by making my number smaller by dividing my a value out. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 16. So I have 0 equals negative 16 squared divided by negative 16 is x squared. 32x divided by negative 16 is minus 2x. And 128 divided by negative 16 is negative 8. And that's a little less intimidating. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and use my double bubble to set up two sets of parentheses. My x's fall down, and my first sign falls down. Now to get a negative 8, I need opposite signs. So I'm going to put a plus in the second set of parentheses. Then I need to find the factors of 8 that subtract because of the minus here, so they have a difference of 2. So my factors of 8 are 1 and 8, and 2 and 4. So 8 minus 1 is 7, and 4 minus 2 is 2, so I'm going to be using this one. Now to get a negative 2x for my b, my bigger value has to be the negative 1. So I'm going to, I'm going to put the 4 where the minus is, and the 2 where the plus is. Alright, so now we have factored it. Now we need to go about finding the zeros. So I'm going to set each of these factors equal to zero. So here if I add the 4 over, I get x equals 4. Here I need to subtract the 2 over and I get x equals negative 2. Now again, because this is talking about time, and we can't have negative time, we're going to get rid of that answer. And so the only answer possible is this positive value. So it would take 4 seconds to reach the ground. Um, if you want to be really nice to your English teachers, you would say it would take the baseball. Alright, you can add some detail in there, make your answer more interesting. But that's it. So that's how we're solving some real world problems uh, using quadratics. Until next time.